Okay, continue right off. Another broken knife beside Joe Starks. Could there have been one? Huh. Uh, you know what? Okay, so I don't think I was mistaken. She definitely knows what she saw. She even drew a picture of it. Like, that's how sure she was. And it was broken. Which I actually got that right, which was nice. But, yeah, there, I, there is another one. If the witness is adamant about this ac the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by another simple ob observational error. Mr. I. In that instance, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. I think I just thought of something. Wait, not this, but... Uh, that's what it was, isn't it? The... The tip of the... The broken... The broken sword on the... And that's why it was taken off of uh, the prosecutor's award. That makes sense. So he took it off the prosecutor's award because that was what was used for the murder. So that was the actual murder weapon. Do I present the shield then or do I present the picture? Uh, I think I'll have to go with the picture just because it actually has the knife on it. The answer, the answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here, inside this picture. This picture is a picture of the award ceremony. Ah! Uh, what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the... The broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. Holding. Oh. Uh, yeah, I just remembered that they took that off for some reason, and it was a knife, so... Well, it's sort of a knife. Yeah, that's a broken knife. As we earlier conclude, the knife in the picture was not Joe Nark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was all in like in all likelihood this award. Murder with murder with its own award. Order, order, order. Neil Marshall was awarded the King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and broken knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was uh was the only weapon he had in that dangerous situation. But that... that can't be. Oh? And why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors will award what knife was the what murder weapon, then the murderer would be... and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... The man raising the knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! Yeah, thanks to think of that one. That does change things quite a bit, actually. But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait, I I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? The list? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? Why? Why did you draw that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part way deep inside me. I must have. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife makes up and now the blue badger. This should be interesting. <laughs> yeah, indeed, this is really getting really weird. Witness testimony, Emma's recollection. When I, saw, when I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked. I rushed towards both of them. I think I, I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning. 
and that's when I saw the blue badger. Wait, what? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw a, saw a shadow. That is slightly terrifying. <laughs> that, that is slightly terrifying, okay. The blue badger is always watching. This is certainly most unusual. Try impossible. The head detective of the criminal affairs didn't even design him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Stop. Please, don't pursue this any further. Lana. What's the meaning of this? You remain seated in the defendant's chair. Please remain seated in the defense chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. We've already come to this- we've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Cross-examination. Emma's recollection. Uh. Alright, let's begin. Uh... So, saw the man raise his knife. Rush towards the both of them. And now, I think I knocked away the man with the knife. That's when I saw the blue badger. That's really weird. Like, what else? Okay, so the blue badger looks like that. That is terrifying. How would you see that in the room? Hmm. That's really confusing. Like, what else could look like a, the blue badger, then? Let me actually press on this real quick. He was in the room, but I'm sure I saw a shadow. That's really weird. How would he be in there? His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. It had three keep creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. If so, by all means, tell us what you saw... Tell us what this shadow really was. What was it that Emma saw when the lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? Okay. Uh, let's go through the evidence list, because it's going to make me go through. Okay, what could it possibly be? I don't... Still, yeah, probably nothing concerning that piece of picture. Anything in this picture? No. Hmm. It's hard to... Just go through the evidence list one at a time. Slowly. Uh... Is this where the pot comes in, maybe? Let me look at the pot. Wait. turning it around a bit. Kinda, kinda looks like a... There we go. That's what I'm looking at. Kinda looks like a... The triangle thing. And if you turn it like... If I can rotate it a bit better. Let me look at the blue badger real quick. One, two, three. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm going a little too... Too into it. I don't see the third point, though, yeah. What would the third point be? Like, maybe if it had one more. Then I could kind of see, like... But I could kind of see that. Maybe they used the... Maybe this is where the vase comes in. The jar, I mean, the jar comes in. I keep saying vase. Maybe that is where the jar comes in, though. Or maybe it has a... Maybe it has a lid. Does it have a lid? 
What if it had a lid and it looked like that? And then maybe somebody used the jar as a weapon. And then if we go look at her picture... So if this was taken at the same time, maybe a jar was used? Maybe the jar was used and thrown at somebody? Or maybe she threw the jar. Uh, maybe it was... Maybe it was the jar. Because it does have the little balls at the end. And then what if the... What if the, the cap of the jar also had that? I think I might... Uh, I just might know. I'm gonna... I have to go for this. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamed up when I'm gonna do this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen. It is the defense's belief that on the fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright. In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instance? Please show us the mysterious blue badger look like. Because uh, I could, like, out of all this SL9 evidence I have, this is the only thing that could possibly look like it. So... And there's the unstable jar. The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But, Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Oh god, I'm terrible at this, aren't I? I think maybe this way? There's gotta be a cap somewhere on there, though. Let me look through this a bit. This might take me a minute. Okay, so that's the bottom. I don't want to go to the bottom, though. And then I want to rotate it like this. Oh, wait, I think I know what I'm going for. Wait a second, let me, let me rotate this a bit. And up a bit. Then this way a bit. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get this just right. I think... It's, like, not perfect at all, though. But maybe if I... Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. I can see that. Yeah, right there. I hope I got that, like, perfectly right. I hope it's not, like, super... You have to get it super perfectly right, but I think that might be... That does, yeah, because the bottom of it looks like a ball. It looks like the tip on the... Okay. Well, is this a miracle or what? Yeah, that does look like it. That is terrifying. No one can possibly deny the jar's resemblance to the blue badger. No. It can't be. Order, order. The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witness on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see... This changes everything. Yes, because this was a uh, part of the SL9 incident, and it had blood on it. Uh, we're gonna connect the blood soon, or, or do something with the blood. I still think it's writing. I'm just I'm banking on that. Indeed. Very well. Then please tell us, what's it? Uh, what's different now that we know the witness saw the jar? Hmm. Oh man, this is tough. <laughs> 
The location, the murder weapon, or the murderer? Brr, 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 brr. They all... I feel... Okay, so... Murder weapon... I think... This is really weird, I feel like... I think all these change because of the jar. Well, I don't... Location? Yeah, location possibly, but the murder weapon changes, and the murderer... I definitely want to say the murderer changes, because it would be... And this, yeah, this is connecting the jar, and I have the picture too. But the picture was okay. Let me let me look at the picture. So the jar was in the office, and based on that statue, we can say it's on Gon's side of the office. So how did the jar get over to? Because the murder happened on Lana's side of the office. So how did the? So that. Okay, that changes where the murder was, because then it would be on Gon's side of the office if the jar was there. And it changes the murder if the murder weapon was the jar. Uh, I feel like I can choose any of these. I feel comfortable choosing any of these. I might be wrong though. I'll just go with the location. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. Not only that, but she saw a very specific angle. Knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gan. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified her so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see. The struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room in Chief Gon's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gon's office to Lana Sky's office. Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. But there is. Exactly. I, I have a feeling I know where this is going. If it wasn't- if there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Oh, it's that, isn't it? Please call the- recall the witness testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. The next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact made uh, the man made when she, he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Oh... The suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocking into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have been have to been Neil Marshall, wielding the prosecutor's award. No, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There was another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility. Of course, the perpetrator would have no idea, but nevertheless... I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright? What's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall... Yeah, she's the one who... Oh no. And that's why... That's why... Lana's so protective over this. 
You mean... Mr. Marshall died? Because of... me? No. And I believe she fainted. I never imagined her, to tes her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that, coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you proved you moved Mar the reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe in your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Oh, well, Edgeworth's got something in mind. Hmm, touche, Miss Sky. However, of course. That leaves us with one possibility. You mean, there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better- Oh, and this is- is this gonna be the writing on the pot? For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind a name of the person who, uh, who took his life. Somehow. Kind of like, uh, case two. When, uh, when Maya- or Mia wrote down Maya's name. That- that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright? This is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that uh, the victim may have left behind is in the... Uh, yeah, it's in the evidence. It's on the jar. This message from the deceased is already in the pos our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister is a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys the message from the deceased. It's on the jar, isn't it? I've been wondering about that for a while. It looks like, uh, messed up handwriting. Yeah, present. I'm presenting the jar. The message left me by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten that this is just a jar. A message was left here on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped away the blood. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here, drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the, f uh, the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wipes away. The blood must have been seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so, all we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. N no Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us, your honor? I believe these bloodstains re reveal us the answer. To us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written given the circumstances. The murderer's name. Oh god, what am I doing here? My... Oh god. Okay, okay. Okay, 
I can kind of... Okay, I, I got this, I think. How can I... Can I connect this? Can I connect this middle part here? I don't think I can connect that middle part. Okay. Then we connect that. Then we connect that. And this one's easy. Yeah. Well. I like that. I like that. I like that. Perfect. I did it. Woo! And percent. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove his client's innocence. That's why all I have been I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Oh man. Of all people, she may not have meant it. But in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. See, worthy? Can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gone. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, George Ark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Uh, yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That is undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if it wasn't a co any cover-up. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery. Ultimately, the, responsible f the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there, like it wasn't his fault? Order, 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 order! The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where the trial is headed, no one knows. Oh man. Well, that just changed everything. Holy crap. Yes, I would like to save. Oh, this is a good time to stop.